here he is. And I know it's not fair to heap all of this on one man, but today's February the 1st, Greg, and the the list is awaiting, the door is open, public apology, yours. Oh, you're kidding, aren't you? This is the greatest day. It's a public holiday here in Australia. It's called Chapel Day. <laughs> it's where we go. Uh, it's, it's where we go. What a great day it is to be Australian and all you Kiwis can get buggered. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> see, oh, that's oh, it. And we're sorry. No, but see, this is we're the sorry. great thing. We applaud this, you see, because that's your attitude. We don't care. Here, hang, hand us a piece of sandpaper and I'll rub salt into the wound with it. We don't care. We don't We don't remember anything about it. It meant nothing. You were just a, a little ant on the earth that we that stood on and moved forward. Oh, get over it. You're not serious, are you? Well, I actually, I look back with amusement at, at it now. Um, but at the time, it was a really big deal, wasn't it? Oh yes, it, it was a really, it was a big deal. Well, not to you guys. If anyone knew yeah. the chapel, everyone went, "Oh, the chapel's the royalty, the cricket royalty." Three brothers playing in you know this game team was pretty big, but the reality was they were ruthless bastards. Yeah, <laughs> and totally. That's what we wanted. And I think that was the day where we went. Um, a few people, you softies, and there's always softies, all went, "Oh, poor New Zealand, we shouldn't be so harsh on them," and the rest of us went. That's what you get in sport if you don't like it. And I think your All Blacks have taken upon us to uh, punish us. Every Bledisloe match since then has been some sort of wicked payback. But all right, sorry. Is that good enough for you? Say it to the Aborigines, mate. Don't say it to me. Oh, oh Devlin holds serve. Devlin holds serve. Yeah, hey, all right. Um, no, I haven't got anything to be sorry because I've lived here my whole life. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Welcome to country. We get we have to do welcome to country at meeting, not not at meetings at radio station, but at other places. And I go, can't welcome me. I've been living here for more than fifty years. I am part of this world. Uh, that's something for politics. I don't want to talk. Okay, about see, politics. but they tell you what you saying that because we've just had three hours to talk about it with Michael Laws because we've got White Tongue Day yeah. coming up and our country just tears itself in oh, half, right, mate. No. But I mean, you know, you've got an attitude that hey, look, it's like say for example, let me just put this to you. Um, you know, I was born in Germany. My grandparents were, of course, SS and that. Oh, no, no here's, a, here's actually a better one. My great, 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 great grandfather was Jack the Ripper. Do I still get blamed for those murders, do I? How the hell can you blame me for, for that, for that, you know? But anyway. And that's, and that's logic. There. It was only last week it was Australia Day, and the greatest joy I've seen in Australians, our new Australians, the immigrants, they go to the citizens, they become citizens, they came here because they saw it's their dream. It was their dream to come to Australia. They're so grateful, and they don't realise why we're bashing ourselves up so poorly about it. Well, speaking about bashing yourselves up poorly, mate. So you yeah. played the West Indies in Adelaide. You beat them in what a, a day and a half. You, uh, you get to the Gabba. Yeah. Uh, you're absolutely caning them. A guy with a broken toe who can't even walk, doesn't even take his kit to the ground, picks the ball up, and guess what happened? I loved it. I loved the whole thing, mate. The whole of Australia was um, cheering on the West Indies. I went out, I told you, I went to the cricket. I was yeah, sober. Yeah. First time ever. Drove home. Real, what a weird thing that was. <laughs> driving home from cricket, mate. What a bizarre experience. 30, you arrive home, years you're not ago drunk. Good God. Yeah, it was incredible. And you know what I saw uh, last Friday? It's <laughs> day two of that test match. I saw Australians making absolute fools of themselves and I've realised that that's what I've been doing for the last 35 years of my life is being a disgraceful, drunken person and I'm back on it tomorrow. But anyway, um, we cheered for the mate. And you know, you know what I saw was that we're self-satisfied and overconfident because we, oh, we've been the Pakistanis, oh, we're the world champion in uh, one-day cricket. And, oh, we won the test, you know, won the Ashes. We're a little bit up ourselves, mm -hmm. if you hadn't noticed. I'm mm -hmm. sure all you Kiwis. But it, was, it took that test for us to realise we're over, up ourselves. We're all, all our players were a little bit overweight, like there's been too many buffets Ooh, over the summer. Hello. They were lean. They were lean. Because you got to see them up front. You didn't just get what the TV station showed you on heart, at home. They were lean, hungry young men who were, and it was awesome to see that they got the result, mate. It, it's got to be good for world cricket. You I remember the, jo the joy. The joy on the faces, even as the test match was going on in day two, they had pure joy. They were just happy to be playing this Australian team, and then they beat them. That was, I reckon that was the best... Well, this year's only been going for a month. That was the best sporting um, occasion and result I've seen so far because it made me real up, remember what sport's all about is hunger.
Yeah, good on. And, and not only that, then you had uh, the England Indian game, which was brilliant. And then, of course, the Aussie Open. And let's lead into that, where where our man Sinner, who you were back in the whole tournament, he ended up winning. Red headed Italian. How brilliant. did he get red hair? Must have been an Irish or a Scottish person came down. Yeah, dropped off a boat somehow. Italian. Yeah. Yeah, left yeah, left town left town after hey, after good. what falling in love for twenty four hours. It was one of those ones, wasn't it? Hey, he was good. So no, that was that was all good the Aussie Open. I usually uh, get a bit sick of the tennis after all, but that was great. Loved it. You told us a couple of weeks ago. Starting? Well, the Rebels, are they st- even starting? You told us a couple of weeks ago that the three franchises were in trouble. Now, so they're gonna bail this Rebels franchise out for millions of dollars. No. Greg, no, no, okay, it doesn't, it doesn't make well, only this year. So if they don't make money this year, then they fold. Is that is that the case? Well, they won't make they won't make money this year, mate. I've been down there commentating ever since the day they ran on the field. What's that? Ten years ago, and we said, oh, we've got to have a presence. Rugby has to have a presence in Melbourne because it's, the, it's Australia's biggest sporting city. Um, no, it doesn't. Let other codes have their run down there. Leagues just hanging on by its fingertips. We don't need them. Um, and so they're gone. They'll be gone after this season. They'll let them run this season. And then the force have got plenty of money, so they'll hang on. It might be the Brumbies that go next, despite the fact that they've won more Super Rugby Championships than any other team. So it's true, mate. Australian rugby's in a little bit of trouble, but we're just looking ahead, as I said to you last week, to the money we make next year with the Lions, two years later with the World Cup, and two years after that. So we've got plenty of rugby, big rugby coming up. But it's Super Rugby that's dragging the whole thing down. It needs to needs to be blown up and rethought. I, I would think. Is there same sort of thinking going on over there? Uh, I've got I've got a great quote to play. This is from Mark Robinson, the CEO, trying to explain why oh, you know we're playing yeah, Fiji and he's, he's one of your best mates. And well, yeah, I, I, I have to tell you actually the story about bumping into him in France actually with his wife in France. But so so instead of playing <laughs> instead of playing Fiji in Fiji, the All yeah. Blacks, we're playing in San Diego. Okay, so you know here's like, here's an idea. Fiji, we all love oh. Fiji. We love Fijian sevens. We love the Fijian people. How about a whole lot of holiday package tours where New Zealanders, you can take the kids, dump them in a bloody resort, go and watch the test match, actually combine it with a holiday, stuff a whole lot of millions into their economy. This is Mark Robinson, right? They've been, this is, this is, this test has wow. been talked about since November last year. This is him. Time frame lapsed in terms of being able to make that happen meant we, we drew back to one game and then ultimately we thought the, the best thing to do for a variety of reasons was to take that offshore to the west coast of the States. Time lapse. I don't get it. What? What? what are, time lapse. Why we can't? It's, it's in. It's, it's in Fiji. July. It's in pull, Fiji. I you and I, you and I could pull that off and, and say next Thursday there's a test uh, all back home Fiji yeah. and we'd have a full house. Mate, how, how, what, what would it take? I've got a, I've got a travel agent friend. Yeah, let's get some packages together and all make some money out of this, mate. It's a, it's just it, def, it defies belief, doesn't it? Here's a guy talking about fan Cedric and fan engagement. Why not give something back to the Pacific people and the Fijians, mate? Huh? Why not? Thank you. Thank, thank Siva Vinny, you. Siva Vatu, no, Siva Reese, every bloody player we've stolen off you, mate. Exactly. We are on plenty too, mate. But that's the thing. Why aren't we doing it every time we have any game in Fiji? It's completely chock-a-block, and that's with them. Mm. You're right. The opportunities for us to pump millions of dollars into their economy, San Diego, for God's sake. Oh, no, San, San Diego. Like, this bloke keeps on... This bloke keeps on bumbling from one disaster to another. Well, I tell you what's even more disappointing is the gobbers who uh, who call themselves sports journalists. Not one of them is stopping him in the middle of that, saying, "Hang, hang, hang on a second, Mark. Time frames? Really? It's in July, mate. You've known since last November. I'm sure you could get a Fijian holiday organised tomorrow if you just picked your phone up." But you and I—I I don't know if we are allowed to say it. No, because I'm not from New Zealand. But those journos. Because they get fed stories, mm-hmm. if, they, if they buck up and ask too many questions, they don't get fed Bingo. stories. Hey, look, he actually said mm. in France when we bumped into him in Ape and Ape, me and my girl, him and his wife, and he, I'm not joking, mate, he yeah. came up to me, the first thing he said to me is he said, I don't listen to your show, but I hear you bagging me. And this, we're in Ape and Ape, or I've taken a couple of days out from the World Cup. He's there with his wife. I got up and I said, hello, Mark, would you like to sit down and have a glass of champagne with us, would you? And as soon as somebody says, I don't listen to your program, do you know what that means? You, they listen. They listen. Mate, to you, they exactly listen every day to your programming because they're worried about what they're. Well, they're not illegal actions, but that's just wrong, mate. That is just. I know. Wrong. It is. It's just. It's just a finger in the face. Anyway, let's finish on Wayne Bennett. Yeah. Uh, you know the god that is Wayne Bennett. I don't know whether this Valandis thing about saying he's a loser for wanting to coach. I'm not sure whether that's just a media beat up or whatever, or out of context. But Wayne Bennett coaching the Kiwis, mate, be very afraid. He's, he's been involved before, and the last time we played, I think it was a 30-0 Dickin. 
Uh, do, remind me, did, did Australia beat you 30-0? No, 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 it's, no it's, you know, it was kind of like watching rugby again. You know, this was oh, league last year, yeah, yeah. No, but you guys beat us last year 30 Now, What's wrong with Mike? Why wouldn't they go with Michael Maguire? I can't work that out. Well, Why because you can't... Hang on, this is, this is the logic from New Zealand Rugby League. You can't coach yeah. a club and, and also the national team, whereas Wayne Bennett could be coaching the Dolphins and the national team. So, yeah. Mm. No, okay. I, and, yeah. I, I don't get it. You, no. you, yeah. You've already got a coach who's proved himself once doing the same workload. Actually, he's got less low workload next year. He's only got to coach three games in origin mm-hmm. and then do your national team. Some things are made more difficult than they should be. Thank you. But the other side of the coin is I know how brilliant Wayne Bennett is and I can't work out how he keeps on doing it and I do have a bit of an association with him. He's a man deep into his 70s who can still relate to young men. It's, young men. it's quite incredible. The legend is true. He doesn't do so much hands-on coaching. But they talk, talk about man management, and somehow he squeezes the best out of young men. Um, so you never go, go wrong with Wayne Bennett in charge. So you're in good hands. Okay, finally, we always finish on a weather, mate. Yes, we're moaning. It's 30 degrees. You know, we had NIWA, the government weather agency, yesterday telling us it's a heat wave. I know it's unusual in summer to be hot. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How hot is it in Briz? Uh, it's only 32 today. It's very mild, so <laughs> it's uh, a relief. It's going to be back to 35, but it's it's not. Well, wait, we've had. Do you know what an El Nino? Do you listen to these weather patterns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. New yeah. Zealand El Nino, like So it was El Nino uh, declared by the bureau? Who else, apart from footy tipsters, get things so wrong but still hang on to their job? Anyway. Um, they told us it was going to be El Nino. So all the farmers over here sold all their cattle and sheep. They went, we won't have enough feed if it's going to be dry and bushfire of summer. So now we haven't got enough bloody cattle. They've all been sold. Anyway, so 32 and fine. Uh, keep keep on coming over here if you want to, and hopefully a few of you can play for the Wallabies and we'll get back up to number one. Oh, I always love having you on every Thursday, Greg. Thank you so much.